Hey there, sign folk. Uh, hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, today is uh, Thursday, October 21st, and uh, figured I'd do a little uh, question answering, I suppose. Um, the last video that I posted there on Tuesday with some of the Amazon and Etsy orders, um, I asked you guys, you know, questions and, uh, you know, I asked the question of what you, uh, the viewers, would uh, prefer to see more. And I got a couple uh, answers there and I appreciate you uh, responding and I appreciate the comments. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and dive right into this. The uh, Tuesday and Thursday, like I said, depending on the amount of orders that we do, uh, we go ahead and we get those done first. Um, again, the orders um, come from Amazon and, and Etsy. Um, again, we've been on Amazon for uh, 12 years. My wife had an account um, when they were just selling books before Amazon became Amazon. Um, we are uh, known as a third party seller to where um, anyone could sell on Amazon as long as you have a business license and um, some sort of liability insurance. Um, why they require that, I really don't know. Um, but uh, anyways, that's one of their requirements. Um, so basically, you just get signed up with them and you start selling products. And um, uh, Etsy, we've been on Etsy, I think, now for 12 years. We started when Etsy wasn't really known that well. Um, and being on Etsy, as long as we have with the amount of feedback and um, knowledge that we have on the site, definitely helps us. Uh, it definitely gives us an advantage on selling the products um, that we sell. Um, that being said, um, there, there was a question, I think it was by uh, Michelle Smith, and I uh, appreciate you tuning in, appreciate you watching. Here's a shout out to you. Um, so she wanted to know more on the type of products that we print on, etc., etc. Also, can you print on clear? Um, so the products that we can print on is basically endless. Um, if there is a media out there, the EcoSol of a printer will print on it. Um, now you have to do some fine tuning. You have to do some profiling, uh, make sure that it turns out correctly, too much ink saturation, print speeds, production, uh, environment, and all that other good stuff. Um, so the type of products mainly that we offer that sell right now are static cling, peel and stick, and die cut vinyl. So the static cling and the peel and stick, those are obviously digitally printed products. They come off the printer. Typically, they're contour cut. Um, very rarely do we just print something and send it to them. Um, but the, um, the die cut stuff is pretty self-explanatory. So when we first started, um, we didn't have a printer. All we had was the cutter. And we kind of jumped on the wall lettering bandwagon. And we were fortunate. We, we didn't catch it. We weren't one of the first... Um, pioneers per se but we got on it pretty early and that niche market was phenomenal and i can't <laughs> i can't emphasize enough how much money that we made when uh when we did that i'm a sign maker by trade um but um as long as i'm using my equipment um i, I don't really care what i'm making as long as i'm making money um, my wife's, um, background is more business related. I'm more creativity. I can make anything basically work. The business end of everything, I suck at it. I hate doing it. I have no interest in doing it and I just drop interest. But she said, Hey, they're doing this. Can we do that? Absolutely. It's easy enough. I can figure that stuff out. So I can figure stuff out on the production end. She figures out how to market it in front of customers. So essentially, we just develop products that we think customers are interested in. And not everything works. Again, in my previous video, I said we have thousands of listings. And out of those thousands of listings, you get a small percentage of things that sell regularly. You have another small percentage of things that sell every once in a while. And that would be seasonal things. Um, sometimes there's new trends. There's new... Um, I don't know, slogans or, you know, hashtags or, you know, the new latest and greatest thing. You need to jump on the bandwagon when that stuff is current um, because that's when you make your money. Um, so back to Michelle's question, the type of materials, um, 
or the products that we sell. So again, static cling. So this, this would be indication of static cling. Um, this one specifically is all clear. When I said in the previous video that this was a boo-boo because I had clear static cling in, and when I just kind of look over the back of the printer, I can't really tell what's clear and what's actually white. So we print static cling on essentially two um, types of media. Um, so in, in certain areas, I guess, the effect of printing on clear um, appeals to more people because they don't like seeing that white outline. Essentially, that's just the nature of the beast, unless you can print white, which our printer cannot. So let me kind of emphasize on that. So our printer is CYMK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And when we print on medias, typically you always need a white base in order for the colors to come out correctly. Um, and it could be any color. You know, that's how the profiling works. The profiling always starts with a white base. So when you print on clear, um, although the backing paper is clear and this kind of looks the same, I don't have a sample to compare it to, but you all wouldn't be able to tell the difference until I pull this off and... So I'm going to pull one of these leaves off and I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see my fingers do it. So the ink is translucent. So, um, you know, a lot of printers now, majority of printers, they only print four colors. There are some that print um, six colors, white and metallics um, to each their own. I, I am not a fan of uh, white um, ink. Um, I still don't think that... Uh, it's expensive and slow, so you need to charge accordingly. And the type of products that we sell, the market, um, we just couldn't get our money out of it. You know, this ink has become relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, production costs are fairly low, so we can justify keeping this. And we only focus on products that are within our capabilities. Um, sometimes we step out of the box. Sometimes you get some custom uh, requests. And I'm just honest with people. I said, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Most of the time we can, but sometimes it's just not worth it. So um, the uh, what other type of products can we print on? So um, an eco Sullivan printer, again, can print on just about any kind of media. So here's a sample of some engine turn gold. Um, I think this is by our tape. I can't remember. That's one of the samples that we can print on. Um, you have your clear static cling, you have your white static cling. So the white static cling, obviously static cling has zero adhesive on it. Um, the material on the back um, is the sticky portion, not the sticky portion, but the part that adheres to glass. Any smooth surface, not good for outdoor use. If you can use it for outdoor use, I'd recommend it's probably a two or, two or three day um, time frame that, that they would use it. Um, now, if it's, say, um, inside, um, like on, um, on a porch door, like a screen door, not the screen per se, but, you know, the glass. So you can put this on the outside as long as it's kind of covered. Um, the problem is the material shrinks. And when it shrinks, that's when it kind of loses its cling, and that's when it kind of falls off. It has nothing to do with um, the print fading or anything like that. So um, white static cling, clear static cling, those are two of the major things that we print on. Um, and then the other one is uh, peel and stick. Now peel and stick is an adhesive base. It actually has a pretty aggressive adhesive, adhesive adhesive on the back. Um, this is a thicker media. It's about six mils and you can see it's very, it's very rigid. So even when I pull the material off, it'll almost stand on, on itself where if you do that with static cling, because it's very thin, much more conformable, obviously you're not gonna get that. So when we claim that things are peel and stick, um, it makes it easier on us because we don't have to um, mask them. Um, it is a heavier product, so you have to take shipping weight into consideration as well. So peel and stick is one thing. And then of course you have your typical stickers, regular signage. Um, this is all stuff that, uh, that I did for some of the other uh, ACM wood signs and whatnot. Um, some of the other more creative things are, you know, you have your perfect decals. Um, these are outdoor decals printed on substance with a gloss laminate. Um, 
you know, it's uh, th these things are great. I don't know how many times these guys have ordered these things. Um, I'm not big for um, a lot of production of these things just because I'm not set up. Like I said, if I had a, a laminator, um, it would probably be easier. But these jobs come in about once every two months. It's just not justifiable for me. So white media, regular stickers, we print on those as well. Um, and then some of the other more specialty things is, say, something like this chrome. Um, we can print on Chrome. Um, you will have to adjust the profiling on the printer. Uh, you have to play around with, you know, certain parameters, certain Chrome uh, bends and warps. You can't do like really long runs of this stuff because of the heat that the printer, um, the, the, um, the printer turns on heating elements, uh, forward, middle, and back. And what that does typically on your PVC vinyl um, it kind of opens up the pore, so to speak. So when when there's heat introduced to uh, to the vinyl, it kind of opens up. So when the print actually lays on top and it cools off, it kind of encapsulates, um, protects the vinyl a little bit better. Um, you know, foil type um, vinyl um, doesn't really react that way the same way. So when you're doing metal based stuff, it has a tendency to buckle. Um, so you have to be cautious about, um, you know, your profiling and all that other stuff. But, you know, these were just some extra ones that, uh, that we had laying around, but that kind of gives you an idea for, uh, you know, what we can print on. Um, so there's that. And, um, so then I had, uh, another question from Brandon. Uh, Brandon said, I wouldn't mind seeing all the stuff that you just mentioned. Um, Brandon, you can go back and look at some of the other videos of something specifically that you're looking for. Um, essentially with, you know, digital printing, die cutting, and the CNC machine, there's really nothing that I can't make. Um, but it's up to me. You know, the market kind of dictates what's worth my time. Um, you know, where I spend more of my time, um, obviously, is sign-related stuff. Signs make me, hands down, more money um, when it comes to um, how much time that I physically spend on stuff. I know what my material costs are on certain size signs with printing. The variable for me is my design time, and I try to keep that to a minimum. A lot of stuff, uh, you know, people just send me, um, you know, their logos, whether it's a low resolution and I have to recreate it, or, you know, they just pick an image. I don't ask where it comes from. I generally know where it comes from, um, but that's why I ask customers to supply their own logos, um, and I typically try to match fonts as close as I can. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, you know, and I'm very realistic with customers and saying, you know, this just isn't going to work. I can recreate it or you can take it as is, you know, I've seen it go either way. Some people will take it as is and I'm appalled by some of the things that I print out, but Hey, the customer is mostly always right. Um, and, um, so moving on. So the next question was, uh, tease that please. And uh, they say, looking to get a large format printer, what is your opinion in HP Latex? I love the results of EcoSolvent, but the curing time concerns me. The curing time um, really depends on, now let me, I have zero experience with HP Latex um, printers. Um, when we were in the market looking for another printer, um, the technology was out there. They were selling them. I just wasn't sold on the lifetimes of the printheads. Um, when you weigh the options, I think they're about the same. Um, yeah, I know that you, or I, don't, I think they, at least they used to, um, you know, when you had a printhead go bad, um, then you just take it out, you put a new one in. Um, over the life, I think it's just the same as with an Eco Sullivan printer. And I could be wrong. Like I said, I don't really have any experience with uh, with latex, um, I know they have good points and bad points. I use, um, some wholesalers that print latex looks great to me. I couldn't, you know, discern the difference between latex and solvent. Um, so I, I think it just comes down to personal preference. You know, if it's something that, uh, you know, that, that you feel, um, that you have to have as far as cure time, <coughs> excuse me, cure time. Cure time really depends on your profiles. So within FlexiSign, I have three or four different profiles that I use, some more than others. And profiling will dictate 
how much ink the printer puts down. The more ink you put down, the longer it takes to cure. So it really depends on what you're printing. If you're more wrap oriented, where details, um, and it's a fast paced environment, then you'd probably be better off with, uh, with a latex. Um, just because you can print it as soon as it's printed and it's wound up, you can go ahead and throw it on the laminator, um, you know, get it laminated, get it over to the vehicle or the boat or whatever that you're, uh, that you're wrapping and, uh, and get it done. Eco solvent with a heavy saturation of ink. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You, I, I would highly recommend, you know, letting it sit for at least 12 hours. They say 24. Um, but it depends, you know, if you have a high saturation of black, then obviously that's going to take a lot longer, um, to cure than, you know, just a light coat of yellow. Um, so there's no real definitive answer whether one is better than the other, but, uh, you know, cure times. Yeah. You know, on the standard stuff that we print out for all this production stuff, like, like the stuff that I was showing you. So these are typically print at, uh, 540, Um, this is a, this is a profile that prints with pretty good saturation. And I say pretty good because I can look at it. Um, I can look at uh, profile the, the 540 720 or 720 by 720. And it really depends on the colors that are in the design um, and the saturation uh, of the overall design will determine how I'm going to print something. I would say 90% of the time I print 540 720. Um, because the customer will never be able to discern the difference between a 720 and a 540 profile. 540 is going to print a lot faster. It's going to lay down a lot less ink. Um, now that also comes into lifetimes too. The more ink you put down, the longer it's going to last. Um, that, and you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. So if you're doing a wrap and you're charging $3,000, $3,500 for, uh, you know, for a wrap, um, you know what you have in material, something like that obviously makes more sense to, you know, print in a, a higher profile with more ink saturation. That way it lasts longer. There's certain things that you can't control. One thing is the, um, you know, the longevity and how people take care of stuff. I just assume that people put stuff up and they never give it a second thought. They're not going to be out there cleaning it every year. They just want the thing that lasts for 20 years. I tell them that it just doesn't exist. Um, but, you know, depending on the type of material that you print on, um, you know, the, the curing time, I, I think that's, that's probably a minimal factor. Um, you know, I think cost and, um, service and support, um, would, would probably be my main concerns if I was looking to buy, um, another, another printer, which I'm not, I have no intention of buying another printer anytime soon. Um, so um, and another, and another thing. So a lot of people talk about eco solvent and the smell. I'm very sensitive. My sinuses drive me nuts. Um, I'm very sensitive to smells and, and all that other stuff. Um, maybe I'm accustomed, maybe I'm just used to it, but, um, the only time that I can smell the solvent outgassing is when there's a heavy saturation of ink. When I print 540, um, 540, 720 or 720, 720. I can smell it a little bit with 720 by 720. Um, the smell has to do with the profiling. The more ink that it puts down, obviously the more smell that you're going to get. So keep that in mind as well. I think that's a little misconception. A lot of people had, we, we were concerned when we first bought one that I'd have to get an air scrubber, um, because we were inside of a, a, a building. We were actually in the basement of a kind of a popcorn factory, I guess you would say. And, um, so we, you know, we were concerned with the smell, but it never, it, it, it wasn't even a, a factor, you know, because our printer doesn't run 24 hours, seven days a week, heavy saturation of ink. We never had that problem. So, um, you know, this is a closed space. I think the shop is 28 by 34. Um, half of this is allocated to, you know, about 20 by 28. Um, and I don't smell it, but again, I don't print near as much as, as what we used to. Um, so, I hope that helps you out. Um, and the last question was uh, from Aunt Lulu. And uh, I would like to know more about what products and what those products can be used for. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, the window clean product. So um, she's talking about doing um, to a trade show and which one is better showing products and the usability of the products. Uh, let's see here. Tricky. And I'm going to try to stay on track here. So... We target home decorating 
that's kind of, that's where we get our inspiration from. Um, and that's where, whether it's seasonal or whether it's year round or whether they're trying to emphasize a space or a kitchen or a, you know, laundry room or, you know, whatever. Um, that's kind of what we focus on. Um, what they can be used for kind of depends on, you know, what you want. You know, if we had an idea and it just kind of, um, you know, well, we can do this. Well, if we can do this, then we can do that. And we can do this, you know, and it just kind of evolves into, you know, more and more about what you can do. But I'm comfortable printing on static cling. I'm comfortable printing on peel and stick. And I'm comfortable printing on regular adhesive based media. Um, with those things, the sky's the limit. I mean, you can, you know, if you create a product that, um, you know, what, what, and it doesn't have to be, you know, this per se, I mean, you know, you could, you could do something really fancy on, you know, this, you know, I don't know what it would be, you know, kitchen or, you know, lawyer's office. And just, you know, that's kind of the, the one thing is, you know, the sky's the limit, um, with a lot of these products, but we target seasonal, um, home decorating. That's, I guess in a nutshell, um, even with the signs, we cater to small businesses. Um, that's where most of our bread and butter is. But we cater to the smaller crowd, um, the mom and pop places, you know, the little Airbnbs, people that need personalized stuff. Um, and that's kind of where we come in. Um, so which one is better? So I'm sorry, I'm moving back on here. So, um, I hope that answers your question, Ed Lula, because I'm not sure. Sometimes I tend to ramble and I apologize. But uh, so uh, if I head to a trade show next year, which one is better at showing products and the usability of the products? I think we're talking about static cling. Um, I would always lean on white static cling. Um, again, white static cling, very temporary type um, designs or dates, for instance. Like I said, we sell a lot of wedding static cling stuff. You know, it's one day deal, you know, they put it on the vehicle. It doesn't make, you know, put it on the glass. They can, you know, take it to the limo and, and they ride off. And then when they're done, you just rip it back off. Um, hopefully it doesn't fly off. As long as it's clean and dry, when you apply the static cling, you can get a little bit of rain on it. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, you know, it's not going to make the inks run, but um, yeah. So it, it just really depends on, you know, what you have in mind for, for marketing. And I think marketing is probably the big thing. And again, I go back to my wife, so I can make anything, you know, she has inspiration. She said, well, can you do this? And so, well, yeah, we can do that. And when we had employees, um, when we weren't cutting, printing, production or installing, then they were creating designs, whether it be word letter or wall lettering, word letter. Uh, wall lettering, you know, designs like, you know, these happy, you know, so we said, Hey, you know, we want to create, um, static cling and, and a line of fall based stuff, Halloween based stuff, um, Thanksgiving based stuff, St. Patrick's day stuff, you know, whatever inspires you, I guarantee you that there's a market. So do a little bit of research before you get into that stuff. And I know that the way that things are now, like I said, if I was all about making money, I could probably go in another direction too. But um, I'm okay with doing what we're doing. I'm kind of old fashioned when it comes to some stuff, but, um, you know, it's, uh, th there's a huge market out there and everyone, again, like I said, someone always needs a sign. Um, people have money, they're willing to spend it. Um, as long as it's a decent looking product, um, and you know, it'll take some trial and error to get some of the stuff. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, we screwed up a lot of stuff. Um, but you know, to kind of get to the point where, where we're at today, um, like I said, if it wasn't for my wife, like I said, she was back here working on Amazon, you know, kind of in the background, getting the keywords and make sure that we show back up in the search engines. Um, and, uh, like I said, it seems to help. Like I said, this week was slow. I think we had a couple, uh, most of the stuff we already had sitting over there. There were some Christmas ornaments and, um, some more of these, uh, happy Thanksgivings. And we had a, we have probably a catalog of about 600 decals of, uh, hunting, fishing, and some other, you know, random stuff that, uh, that we sell. We used to sell them on eBay. eBay for us tanked. Um, and we tried and tried and tried. Um, we just couldn't get it to sell. Um, it, it, and it's kind of mind boggling. So, you know, just because it doesn't work on one platform doesn't mean that you totally give up hope because it could excel on another one. For instance, um, we were selling decals on eBay for $2.99. 
Um, and we sell the same decal on Amazon for I think it's either $4.99 or $5.99, plus they pay $2 in shipping. So why people are more apt to pay, you know, six, seven dollars for a decal where they can, you know, it just depends on their preference. So if people are sold on Amazon and you know, that's where we sell most of those, those decals. And it just boggles my mind. So, you know, you can get three times the amount over here, but people, you know, they're, they're comfortable with Amazon. Um, you know, they've had, you know, good luck with it. And it's just one of those things. So, um, anywho, I think I probably rambled on enough. I uh, hope you all have a great day. Um, the wife and I were actually heading out of town for a couple of days. And uh, so I probably won't get another video back up till Tuesday, I'm thinking. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But until then, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I uh, appreciate the comments and um, all the likes and subscribes. And uh, until then, hope you all have a great day and happy sign making, folks.